Thank you and welcome to Synthigo's webinar, What is ICE? My name is Mike and I am a technical support scientist at Synthigo. In this webinar, we will discuss a free bioinformatics tool designed by Synthigo that allows you to analyze Sanger sequence CRISPR edited samples. Here is what we will cover in this webinar. First, we will touch base with the general workflow from CRISPR editing your samples to why you need to genotype your samples. Next, we will discuss what ICE is and how it could be compared to current sequencing methods such as next generation sequencing. Lastly, we will discuss the various types of CRISPR edits you can analyze using ICE as well as its limitations. Remember that you can download a PDF copy of the full slide deck to follow along and write notes during this webinar adventure. Let's get started. CRISPR has created a new way to understand functional genomics by manipulating our nucleic acid makeup. Over the years, CRISPR applications to research has been incorporated into many scientific fields to understand heart development, cancer growth, neurological diseases, and even crop production in agriculture settings. In this workflow, you can see three main steps of what a general CRISPR experiment looks like. The first step to any CRISPR experiment is guide design. You must design a guide RNA to target your gene of interest. The next step would be the delivery and transfection of the CRISPR components, that is the guide RNA and the Cas nuclease typically in a ribonucleoprotein or RNP complex to your cells of interest to genetically edit the nucleic acid. Finally, you need to assess the editing efficiency in the genomic changes you have introduced to then identify the samples containing your desired CRISPR edits. Identifying samples containing the correct edits is a crucial step in experimental workflow because it is the gatekeeper to the next phase of your experiments. It is in this step that different bioinformatics tools can be used to help you analyze your CRISPR edits, and ICE is one of those tools. Without going into too much detail, I will first briefly describe what occurs during a standard CRISPR genome edit. The CRISPR technology relies on two main components, the gRNA, and nuclease coming together to create a ribonucleoprotein, or RNP complex, to edit nucleic acid. In this case, SPCAS9 and sgRNA are used. Once the RNP complex forms, it will scan the cell's genomic DNA for a region with two motifs, the first one being the PAM sequence, or protospacer motif. It is a two to six nucleotide sequence and it is generally three to four nucleotides downstream of the cut site. The PAM sequence is specific for the nuclease that is being used and for SPCAS9 it is NGG where N can be any nucleotide. The second motif is a complementary target sequence to the guide RNA. At the precise site in the genome that meets both of these conditions, Cas9 introduces a double-strand break in the DNA. After a double-strand break is created and detected by the cell, the DNA repair machinery is activated and directed at the cut site to repair the break. To correct the damage done to DNA, the cell undergoes DNA repair using two different pathways. The most commonly used repair pathway to repair a double-strand break in the DNA is non-homologous end joining or NHEJ for short. In this process, nucleotides can be inserted or deleted at the cut site. These small indels can cause a premature stop codon and or frame shift mutation and disrupt protein expression. The other less favored pathway is homology direct repair or HDR. If the objective of the experiment is to replace the target genetic element with a different sequence to generate a knock-in, the cell can be directed towards the HDR pathway. For this, 
a DNA donor template bearing the desired sequence flanked by regions of homology must be introduced along with the CRISPR components to the cell. The cells will use this template to repair the broken sequence via homologous recombination, thereby incorporating the desired changes into the target region. When you deliver CRISPR components to your cell, you will obtain a mixed cellular population, which will be composed of unedited or wild type cells where no change to the genome took place or the ends were realigned back to the wild type. Homozygous cells where all alleles have been edited with the exact same mutation and heterozygous cells where one allele is unedited or wild type and the other allele is edited. There may also be some compound heterozygous cells where all alleles have been edited but each allele contains a different mutation. This mixed population is what we normally refer to as an edited cell pool, and the editing efficiency of this cell pool is the percentage of the cells in this pool that present some sort of edit, that is the percentage of the cells that are not wild type. For this reason, after you have edited your cells using CRISPR, it is very important to genotype your samples and understand the composition of this mixed population. This will allow you to decide how many clones you need to screen or if the edited pool has a high enough editing efficiency to proceed with your functional assay. This still leads to the question, how can you genotype and assess the nature and prevalence of the different types of edits in your edited cells? ICE stands for Inference of CRISPR Edits and is a free bioinformatics tool designed by Sempigo. ICE has the ability to quantitatively assess CRISPR-generated edits of your Sanger sequenced files. Of the many measurements, ICE determines how efficient your CRISPR editing is and generates a knockout or knock-in efficiency score. Another caveat of using ICE is its ability to help you analyze your pool or clones of cells. For your pool of cells, ICE can help you identify the edit present in the population of the cells compared to the wild type cells. Diving deeper into the analysis, ICE can assist with determining the types of edits found in each allele or if they are the wild type in the uploaded Sanger sequenced files. For example, I will discuss how to prepare for using Synthigo's ICE analysis tool by walking through various key steps. The first thing you will need to do is design PCR primers around your guide RNA that induce a CRISPR edit. As you can see here, guide RNA in green was designed to target exon 3 of the BRCA2 gene. You can design primers to amplify the targeted region which should generate an amplicon of 400 to 800 base pairs. We recommend designing the forward and reverse primers to be at least 150 base pairs from the guide RNA cut site to allow for optimal sequencing quality across the edit. Here in light blue, you can see at the very top of the forward primer that was designed 150 base pairs away from the beginning of the sgRNA in green. Further downstream, also in light blue, the reverse primer was designed 150 base pairs away from the end of the sgRNA. To ensure primer specificity, you can use tools such as Primer Blast to check for off-target amplifications. Please refer to our genotyping protocol for more detailed information about this workflow. When creating your PCR primers, parameters such as having an annealing temperature between 55 and 65 degrees Celsius having a GC percent between 45 and 55, and the length of the primer to be 18 to 22 base pairs long should all be considered for the design. If the primers are closer than 150 base pairs away from the guide RNA, Sanger sequencing may not have time to stabilize before reaching the edited region located in the wild type and edited samples. This will make alignment window too small and ice analysis will most likely fail. For example, 
If you use a primer that is 70 base pairs away from the guide, you can receive a message from ICE saying, low Sanger sequencing quality. In this case, the sequencing primers are too close to the cut site and you will need to redesign the sequencing primers to be at least 100 to 150 base pairs away from the cut site. Once you amplify your edited region by PCR, you need to sequence the amplicon to assess the genetic makeup of your sample, zygosity in the case of clones, or percentage of the edited cells if your sample is a cell pool. We will go into more details of how to analyze this in a few slides. One of the methods used to determine the sequence of a sample is known as Sanger sequencing and should be done if you would like to use ICE as your bioinformatics analysis tool. Before sending your samples to Sanger sequencing, all of your PCR amplicon samples should be purified to get rid of the PCR byproducts, leaving only your amplicon samples to sequence. This can be done through purification kits or agarose gel purification methods. It is very important to make sure you use the same primers for both edited and wild type samples when conducting Sanger sequencing. For example, if you use the forward primer to sequence your wild type sample, you should also use the forward primer to sequence your CRISPR edited sample. Using different primers to compare amplified Sanger sequencing files will not work if you plan to use ICE. Once you have done your Sanger sequence files of each of your samples, it is now time to use ICE to analyze your sequencing results. But let's understand what ICE is a bit better. As I mentioned earlier, ICE stands for Inference of CRISPR Edits and is a free and easy to use software tool that offers fast and reliable analysis of CRISPR editing data, offering accurate results that correlate strongly with next generation sequence based analysis. Here you can see a comparison of the inferred indel frequency from ICE and next gen sequencing analysis of 92 CRISPR gene knockout experiments on the left. Each point represents a discrete indel with its NGS inferred frequency on the X axis and ICE inferred frequency on the Y axis. Frequency from the two methods are well correlated with an R squared equaling 0.96. On the right-hand side, you can see a comparison of inferred indel and HDR event frequencies from ICE and NGS analysis of 40 CRISPR knock-in experiments. Each point represents a discrete indel from non-homologous end joining or substitution insertions from homology direct repair with next generation sequence inferred frequency on the x-axis and ICE inferred frequency on the y-axis. Non-homology end joining indels are denoted in gray, while homology direct repair events are depicted in various colors, which correspond to the size of the insertions. Across all categories, the frequency of the indel inferred by next generation sequencing and ICE are closely matched with an overall correlation of an R squared equaling 0.97. Both the knockout and knock-in plots compare ICE indel and next generation sequencing indel frequency detections, and you can see an almost one-to-one -one correlation between the two analysis platforms. This shows that ICE can be a great alternative tool to use for analyzing your indel frequency other than next generation sequencing. We next sought to show that ICE correlates well with the current gold standard of amplicon sequencing, or AMP-seq. We performed amplicon sequencing on 92 samples and correlated the ICE prediction with the AMP-seq results for each indel size in all samples. The scatter plots compared all the pairwise points from the indel distributions. On the left, you can see ICE results are a high confidence with R squared values above 0.95. The correlation of AMPSEQ with ICE is really high and the Pearson R squared equals 0.96. On the right, ICE results with low quality 
or where R squared is less than 0 0.95, show a low correlation with AMP seq results with a Pearson R squared equaling 0 0.88. However, ICE results would still be informative. While AMP seq has better sensitivity in quantitation, Sanger sequencing still remains a more widely accessible, faster, cheaper method. The higher correlation of ICE results with AMP seq suggests that ICE can be a reliable substitute for the vast majority of the cases. Here you can see a comparison of indel histograms from three CRISPR gene knockout experiments. NGS-derived estimates on the left are compared with those produced by ICE on the right. ICE can accurately predict indel outcomes and indel profiles closely resembling that of AMP-seq across multiple tested edits. Briefly mentioned in previous slides, ICE has the capability to analyze both mediated knockouts and knock-ins. In these examples, you can see here on the top, the ICE analysis of a CRISPR-mediated knockout sample shows the nature and frequency of the different types of indels present in the sample. On the bottom, you can see what a successful knock-in experiment looks like. The highlighted sequence in orange represents the percentage of the population with a successful knock-in, as well as other CRISPR edits contributing to the sample. The highlighted nucleotides in orange of this knock-in sequence represents the donor sequence ICE was able to detect. Both of these examples originated from Sanger sequencing files that were purified prior to analysis. ICE not only allows you to analyze both knock-in and knock-out experiments, but you can also use ICE indistinctly for the analysis of edited cell pools and cell clones. ICE can analyze a variety of SPCAS9 mediated edits such as knockouts, small knock-ins, single nucleotide variants, or codon swaps. However, it does come with some limitations. When you are trying to knock out a gene using a single guide RNA, the largest deletion ICE can detect is up to 40 base pairs. When using multiple guides for your knockout, ICE can analyze deletions up to 150 base pairs. It should also be noted that three guides are the most that can be inputted into ICE for your analysis. For knock-in experiments, ICE has the capability to detect insertions up to 270 base pairs. It should also be noted that ICE assumes you are using SPCAS9 nuclease and will place the cut site three bases upstream from the three prime end of your guide. Lastly, Sanger sequencing always has some inherent noise. Because of this, ICE cannot clearly determine if sequences present at 5% or less are background noise or if they are truly present. Even if these sequences are real, the sensitivity of Sanger sequencing is very low in this range. We therefore recommend cautiously evaluating any sequences that are present at 5% or less. If you would like additional resources of ICE, how to analyze results, and other webinars, feel free to glance over all of these links to help you further. All of our resources are free of charge and are great tools to help you get started with your experiments. Here at Synthigo, we would like to help you with your CRISPR needs anytime. Please feel free to reach out to us and we will be happy to help you out. I would like to thank you for your time and please visit our help center and website at www.synthigo.com for more information.